Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming this uh, just a little late in the day. Uh, I'm Stuart Tansley, um, hosting uh, uh, my honoured guest, uh, Don Anderson, today, who is Executive Vice President of Marketing from uh, a small company that, no doubt, I hope everybody in the room has heard of, called Gumsticks. And I invited uh, uh, Don here to uh, tell us a little bit more about Gumsticks and his vision for pervasive embedded uh, uh, devices. And uh, we've been talking to some other groups in, uh, in Microsoft today, and he's also going to be presenting uh, at the WeDig talk, the uh, Windows Embedded uh, Developer Interest Group that meets uh, uh, every month uh, um, uh, on the Microsoft campus. So if you want to hear more about WeDig, then uh, talk to me uh, uh, or some other WeDig members in the room. Uh, but this moment is for Don. So Don, over to you. I'll get your video going. OK, thanks. Welcome, everybody. It's my first visit to your campus. You may be a little surprised that Someone who runs a Linux-based company is here today, but I am excited to be here today and uh, talk to you about the gumsticks. How, how many people own a gumsticks today? Nate does, I know, this fellow here. How many people know what I'm talking about when I talk about gumsticks? Most of you, great. Well, this is a little gumsticks here. Um, this is a NetSticks computer. A professor in England put together this robotic fish, and if I hadn't told you it was a fish, you may have been fooled a little bit. He's at the uh, University of, of Essex. And actually what this fish is, is a, um, it's actually two pins in three sections. And it's swimming through the water with infrared detecting the walls and being able to avoid collision on the walls. Um, it's also inhaling water to sink and exhaling to rise. Um, it's quite an incredible project. I've talked to, to him on the phone. and. Uh, he's pretty excited what he could do. He used Wi-Fi to communicate to the fish, etc. Um, he's now bought eight more units to make a school of fish, presumably not bumping into each other either. Um, this was actually a commissioned project by the London uh, Aquarium to put this in an exhibit. And that photograph is actually, if you back up the camera, um, there's actually children standing in front of that picture window. Um, today I want to talk to you about the gumsticks. Hi, welcome. Um, and tell you what we're doing in the marketplace, uh, what's happening in the marketplace. I want to uh, share with you some of the sort of experiences we're seeing as, as people realize they can do more and more and more things on tiny little computers. Um, it's a pretty exciting marketplace that's growing and the Windows embedded space is uh, certainly starting to look at doing lots of different work. There's been the WeDig project working on the gumsticks for a while. Um, we've just put out some really exciting boards. The latest one is called the Goliath board, which will be out soon on um, cellular technology in the, um, that attaches into the gumstick. So you can now put the gumsticks out on a cell network on top of being Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and 10100 and many, many other things. So um, I'll take you a little bit of path down through the path of gumsticks and tell you what we're all about. Um, while we're a customer, or a small company, we have a very large customer base for a three-year-old company, three-and-a-half-year-old company. Um, because we do everything on a community basis, uh, we actually know who our customers are, and we have 6,500 people registered. Uh, we sell the products in over 60 countries around, around the world. We don't sell in, in some of the key markets like India and China and Israel, but we sell all across North and South America and uh, through Europe and through um, Australia and New Zealand, South Africa. Uh, but, half the, but half our customers are based here. Um, there's some really good skills in this area. There's, um, I actually personally come from Vancouver. Um, and though our entire business, why do you smile? You do too, okay. Um, our entire business is down near Stanford. Everybody is a Stanford grad and, and we're based uh, in Portola Valley. Uh, we do all our engineering and our sales and our marketing and PR is all based out of that area. Um, we do contract manufacturing. Our, our two main locations are actually in California. So um, for low volumes in particular, we can declare our products to be made in America, which is also kind of unique. Um, we used to build them in China. We found that um, uh, the cost differential did not at all justify um, the problems that we had with the time zones and all the issues of being overseas versus driving the thing down the street to the contract manufacturer in Scotts Valley or just north of us. Um, we are a private hel privately held corporation. I just, as I prepared this, I realized we're entering our fifth year of business in October. 
So we've done, uh, we've done all of this on our, it's a real business. We support ourselves. We didn't go out and raise a whole bunch of money and burn through it. Um, it's a company that's grown as a real business and we're pretty happy about that. In also preparing this, I realized that uh, it would interest you uh, to see the kind of companies that do work uh, on the gum sticks. And I've had a lot of communication with many of these people. Um, when I was in HP Labs, uh, probably two and a half years ago, uh, I was sort of half laughing to the, to the engineer standing in front of me when he asked me, how big is gum sticks? And in those days, I said, well, we're a pretty small company, but you know, if there was ever a company in the world that I wanted to stand in and tell you that we were working out of a garage, this would be the one standing in HP. And we actually are located about a mile from where that lab office is, and it's Hewlett and Packard's offices are right inside that same building. Um, I've met with guys in Motorola in Denmark. Um, Nokia's been doing work in Finland. Uh, many, many military projects are occurring with the gum sticks. Uh, you may know that the military has an uh, endeavor to uh, deliver, uh, deliver about a third of the products to the field, supplies to the field, in unmanned operation. They're trying to, that's why we're seeing all this different work and DARPA challenges and all that kind of work. And a lot of people are looking to gum sticks to be a, uh, a brains behind whatever solution they're looking in that marketplace. Um, in the education space, we've got, uh, we've got 140 different universities registered already. And in fact, a lot of the people uh, actually post their projects in the wiki of, uh, at our gum stick site and tell others about what they're doing and, uh, and share those thoughts. So um, there's quite an interest in the education group here on understanding that more and seeing how we can leverage what's happening with Windows uh, in that space as well. The whole uh, methodology behind Gumsticks has taken what's been happening in the embedded space, combining it with the concept of community and open thinking, and taking it into an area we call way beyond embedded. Um, we share all our design. We share all our, except for our motherboards, we share all our software. Um, we have probably 5% of our customer questions are answered by us, and the rest are answered by our um, customers themselves. And I have to answer a question. So you have 6,500 customers. Yes. How many gum have you sold? Uh, well, we're private, so we don't announce that, but we've sold thousands, and we've sold millions of dollars. Yeah. So, and we're in our fifth year of business. So if that gives you a space. Thousands means roughly one per customer. Thousands. Yeah. Several thousands. Yeah. 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 But I'm not going to tell you if it's 100,000 or but uh, we're a viable business. And um, I'll show you slides later of a company that's building a uh, time and attendance keypad, and they literally buy by the 1,000 every month. <clears throat> uh, we are an open source company. So on our website, you can decide that you might want to uh, build an interface board to the gum stick. So if you go to our website, um, you, know, you can actually get the diagrams, the schematics of the NetCF board. This is a board we built for that German company. They had an install base of Compact Flash. They knew that as they went to the next generation project, product, this was two years ago, that that install base would be rolling over to 10100 Ethernet. So they asked us to build a combination board. We did. We liked the idea so much we made it into a common product. So that attaches into the Connex motherboard and we have a configuration um, that they could now, um, someone could take this and build something different because we make this schematic open and available to them. Um, sometimes we get people that ask us to build the board without different components on it, and we do that as well. So the flexibility is tremendous. You're starting with a motherboard that is literally the size of a stick of gum. Okay, so this particular motherboard is the Connex motherboard. It has the Intel processor here, flash and RAM here. It has a low speed 60 pin connector on one side and then a higher speed 120 pin connector in the other. So you can actually build a three board configuration with this. Uh, this is the second of our motherboards and the third one is out called Vertex and I'll go through that in just a minute. Um, a project we did this summer with some students was to upgrade the way we present the material on our, on our boards and we actually used Google's warehouse to create schematics like this one of our Goliath board and post that in the warehouse. This is done to scale so that people can take this and build a casing around it or learn, you know, make the design to fit it into a particular product that we're building. We've got really, really good feedback on this capability and how um, they can take that and design it into whatever they want to do. It's a bit of a play on words or, or kind of a joke in our 
company. This board is not very big, but to us, it's huge, so we called it Goliath. When you take the embedded marketplace and take the new kind of ways of programming in it, uh, you create a whole new environment for speed to market. And we're seeing a lot of attraction for this. Um, we also introduced the fact that you can go to a website and buy a whole series of configurations of embedded products straight off the site by the ones, by the fifties, or by the thousands. And so we've really kind of changed the, the perception of, of how you can go to market in, in uh, embedded design. Um, what I really like is the third part of it is we made it easy to understand. I have a lot of competitors that I meet and talk to them and stuff and by the time I've turned around I've really forgotten what their company name is or what their product name is. But gum sticks and robo sticks and ether sticks, it's very rare that someone doesn't come up to me and say, you're Mr. Gum Sticks, right? <clears throat> so it's a very recognizable name as well. Uh, as some of you all, when, when I see the hands up here and we see the recognition of the product and the company, we're recognizing that we're starting to become kind of a leader in the small four-factor industry, and that's further supported by um, what happened last June. I don't know this company, at least I didn't know this company. A press release came, comes out, I'm like anybody else, I've got a scan on gumsticks for any press release, and this company has issued a press release talking about how they've taken their large software, ported it to the gumsticks, and they're bragging about it in the press. I've never heard of them. I thought that was pretty great, so I phoned them up and said, that's pretty great. And uh, we've uh, had some good communication with them before, or with them since, and gone forward with them. Um, but this is their wording. You know, they say it's the world's smallest computer, um, significant cost, size, and weight, and power savings. Uh, this particular group is taking um, a military, you know, the big 40-pound military radios they make, the whole initiative is trying to make them smaller, more functional, and, and longer battery life. And they're doing that with software. So their way of going into their customer set is to take, the, take this NetSticks computer, and they walk into the customer and say, by the way, you know, our, our uh, software, which used to run on huge, big systems, um, now runs on a gumsticks. And they're getting great traction in their customer set by doing that. Any questions? On the Windows side, we are actually very excited to see progress in the Windows. We've been talking a lot with the group in, uh, in the WeDig group that's been the volunteer group to put together um, some BSPs for uh, gumsticks. And uh, Nate's here today. Um, Paul and I are working together towards the presentation that I'm doing tonight. Um, and David and I talked with regularly. So we would like to see this marketplace develop and would like to see it uh, become a very viable solution in many different market sectors to have Windows fully supported by Microsoft on the Gumsticks platform. And uh, that's why I'm here. It's, uh, it's great to see this support and, and uh, by Stuart and by Paul and by the, uh, the team that I just met in the Embedded Group. Um, our skill set and our competency is in Linux. So as we go forward, we will go forward in Linux. But from a marketing point of view and a communication point of view, we will be happy to work with the groups that go forward on, uh, on Windows and how we drive that forward is what I'm taking charge of. Does that make sense to people? Do they, do they understand that, does that make sense that we would be happy about this, not cautious about it? Yeah? Uh, before I talk about what's written up there, this is a very interesting shot. This is actually way up at 65,000 feet. Um, he's actually done Pegasus 1, 2, and 3. Uh, He's a, he's a Brit. You can actually go on YouTube and see this video of him assembling this huge helium balloon. And he attached to it a gumsticks with two cameras, a cell phone, and a GPS locator. And he sent it up into the air and let it just drift. And the gumsticks would tell the cameras to take a picture every two minutes and uh, send that information back. Actually, it would store the pictures and then test by ask the GPS where it was located and then um, text that back to the ground station as to where the helium balloon was located. The balloon rose to the point where it was outside of cell communication. So uh, the guy on the ground was quite worried about it and waited and waited and he lost traction for about 45 minutes. The balloon rose so far that the helium balloon broke. It came down on the parachute that he had designed to, re to uh, prevent a crash landing. It came down, gently landed on the ground, started transmitting again. 
So he jumped in his car and drove across the English countryside and found his contraption and got <laughs> recovered it all. So great fun. Uh, he did number two, and that didn't go so well. He lost it. So we helped him do number three, and, uh, and he's all available on YouTube. You can go see his whole assembly and, and just a good hobby project. Um, so I think that's sort of self-explanatory that we want to see this. Uh, we, I think, personally think we'll see a great sect. You know, I get people contacting me regularly saying, you know, when I say, how did that deal go? They're working on a volume deal. And they say, well, it went well, except the customer wanted to go on Windows. And we didn't have the really full supported product to do that. And, um, and we'd like to get that done, is what they're telling me. Um, by scale, you can see we, we actually just have two cases for the gum sticks, the way small computer and the net sticks. This is based on our first generation board and this on our second. And you can see the relative size of that here. Uh, this is actually being used uh, quite extensively in uh, data centers and network management applications. Because guys, uh, I met with a fellow the other day that built a solution kind of like Prism Tech, where it used to run on, on you know, multi-U rack, and now he can run it on the gum sticks. So not only does he get the visual impact in the presentation, but when they have the discussion about space, he says, well, just get a stick of Velcro and stick it on the back of the door. And then there's just a non-issue inside the data center. So quite a few companies are looking to distribute the net sticks all around their networks. They can literally send it out to the field. All the guy does is plug it in, stick the network connector in there, the cable in there, and now they've got an access, direct communication with something at that point in the network to know exactly what the performance or issues are at that point in the network. And that's, we're really seeing a lot of interest in that. Uh, this is the third motherboard. This is the Vertex board. We put it out this spring. Um, it has the little bit longer connector on it that I mentioned, uh, the 120 pin connector, and it went, we went up to the PXA270. The big thing this offers is USB host, so we've been able to hang, hang different things off that, obviously a keyboard or um, communication like that, but cameras, we're seeing a lot of interest in security applications. Um, the GPRS and GSM um, application, and the, actually the GPRS hangs off the USB side of the, the Vertex. Um, so now, Again, because it's a three-board configuration, you can do all incredible array of things. You could have cell on one side, Wi-Fi on the other. Um, you could have a GPS device in there, um, you know, sensor in there. You can really start to do some pretty amazing things. Um, we also sell the Samsung screen, and just today we put an announcement out. I don't know if you got a chance to see it for the console LCD board, which allows direct connection of the Samsung screen into this configuration. So now uh, you have the four inch, I've got a, we're gonna show, show it to you afterwards, got the, the uh, 4.3 inch LCD screen, the gum sticks behind it, and the Goliath board is actually the, designed to be the same size as the screen. So now you've got a tremendous amount of function and you can actually do all the work straight with, in that own configuration as opposed to having to have your own computer hooked up to it. Any questions on that? Around the world, just a tremendous variety of uses of uh, the gum sticks. Um, Boeing's using it uh, in a variety of ways uh, for their latest jet work. Uh, companies are using it in, in uh, RFID applications, uh, tractor uh, trailer applications in trucking where they're putting the gum sticks inside the tracker, inside the tractor. It monitors data all across the trailer all the way through the location and the location of the tractor. So, for example, if it's a company that's moving cold materials, they can deliver to their customer a full report now that says the trailer in which your meat was stored the entire duration, here's the five minute, five minute by minute measurement of the temperature of that trailer all the way across its journey. Um, if they put the GPS device inside it, what's happening is they're building transportation corridors. So if he's going from, you know, uh, LA to Denver, they know that within a couple of, of miles, um, you know, here's where he should be tracking. So if he falls out of that, either he's in trouble or he's going over to maybe a location he shouldn't be doing late at night. Who knows what? But they, it's a driver safety issue. They can monitor uh, the back door. So this has been a really good attraction where they're in traffic in LA, guy stops at the traffic light, he doesn't know it, but his back doors come open. And the gumsticks will monitor that and then tell the driver or tell a central alert station. So all sorts of interesting things, because again, because they can put this tiny little device in all sorts of locations. I'm going to show you three or four different um, actual products. 
are prototypes that are built on the gum sticks. This one is built by Philips uh, subdivision called Polar Revision in the Netherlands. Um, it actually has a gum sticks inside of it in the side here. And this screen is the e-ink thin film screen. And they built this as a prototype with the intention to drive interest for a GPS device or uh, an e-book. You can actually read this outside. Um, read the screen, the e-ink screen is readable outside. So they, uh, they got quite a lot of interest in this and, and we were thrilled to see that the gum sticks was what they chose to have, to have drive it. Uh, this is our leading customer in uh, Germany. They're actually in New York as well as sales office, but the development that we work with in Germany. They do a time and attendance machine uh, on the first generation board and on the second one they now do an access control machine uh, based on the gum stick. So um, they're starting to introduce, you know, um, fingerprint scanning and retina scanning and, and of course all the bar ba badge access and all the keypads. So a full range of time and attendance uh, function and they, were, they figured they created about a year and a half uh, market advantage over their competitors by putting the gumsticks inside this. If you are like me, you probably spend a little bit of time on YouTube. I don't have the video for this, but he's created a Bluetooth sensitive interaction between the controller and this robot simulation. So when he rocks that controller back and forth, this whole table moves up and down in connection with it. <coughs> Easy to find on YouTube. A group ported Asterix to the gumsticks and created the world's smallest 15 line PBX, even smaller than a can of Red Bull. And they've done quite a bit of work since then. This is actually, um, well, about eight months, six months old. So they, uh, they were pretty excited about being, again, the concept of, gee, I've always needed a big computer, but now I can run it on my little gumsticks. Um, was a pretty exciting one for these guys. Uh, we provide all our motherboards with Linux. We have a very active community of up to 6,500 people. The reality is it's probably a few hundred people that communicate. Uh, the advantage to, to us is we get to see the issues. We get challenged by the issues. We get criticized. We get supported. Um, it's worked extremely well for us and we're pretty uh, happy about the way this has developed. And um, When we did the RoboSticks board, uh, just over a year ago, we actually published the schematic of the board and asked the community to go look at the schematic and, and critique it. And we went through three, four iterations, were you part of that? Yeah, and, and, and produced what was then the RoboSticks and then one of the universities said, could you put audio on it as well? So we created the audio sticks board. Audio Robo. All the schematics, uh, unless you trademark, you copyright them, what's to stop a big competitor eating you for breakfast? Anybody could do that, except we don't publish the motherboard schematics. Yeah. yeah. We do encourage, I mean, to us it's like an API to our world, so we encourage it. In fact, what we have happening is uh, people go design their slight variation of our daughter board and then come back and ask us to build it in cooperation with the motherboard as well. Um, this is a bit of fun. I don't know if you saw this last November. This was actually here in, in uh, University of Washington where a fellow said, well, gee, if, I, if Nike's got this sensor that, that goes in my shoe and my iPod can pick it up and it's an RFID device, why don't I throw some gum sticks around the campus and now I can monitor when someone's coming and going. And so this was actually one of the nicer uh, write-ups because a couple of other guys really took this particular application and made some fun with it and said, gee, you could you could stock on campus. and So needless to say that Nike and Apple didn't make any uh, responses to that kind of trade press. But that was good fun to see that a student had decided to do this application in the is what he chose to, uh, to use around the campus to communicate to it. So that's what we're doing and that's where we'd like to go with Microsoft and with our marketplace. So uh, I'd open it up to questions or thoughts or uh, any ideas you have. You know, Linux is not flavor of the month here. So you put uh, Windows CE on gumsticks. Who will respond when things break? You will respond when they break? Yes. Excellent. We, we would like to do that and have um, a Windows embedded or 5 or 6 or whatever the application be, um, you know, part of what customers choose as, a, uh, as an operating environment for the gumsticks. Absolutely. Yeah. Who's responsible today, Don? Uh, 
if I'm one of the companies that you put up today, um, who do I call if it, if it breaks? It's, you say in uh, during the development phase uh, the, the questioner, or you you, you say in during the, the usage phase? I wasn't sure which time frame you were. I think he doesn't realize you. So, Sir, I think Stuart would like to just understand your question. You, you, were you asking about who do I call during the development phase or, or during the product phase? If there's gum stick with Windows CE and something breaks, who's responsible? At what time frame? Like during the development uh, Out in the field. Which is when it's really bad for things to break. The development phase is very different to the user. Yes. Are so, you talking about both? I'm talking mainly about out in the field. Anytime you buy something from two people, I expect the, the finger pointing game. Uh, actually, it'll be simpler than that to a certain extent. It won't be gum sticks. Our business is Linux and our core competency is Linux. So what we're working to do is find a, with Microsoft's team, find a third party that wants to be that leader to do that work. And they would be, and you um, have, have the relationship. And buy their gum stick from them, from the third party. Who would they buy? Be we had, uh, to be determined. To be determined. Okay. They could buy the hardware from us and buy the software from the other person and make it work, that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But our business is, and that's our core competency. Yeah. It's my understanding that Gumsticks doesn't sell except to hobbyists. Gumsticks customers aren't really the end users. You sell to people like the company that made the time and attendance tracking device. And I think that would be the company, the OEM, I don't know what you'd call that company, but the person who buys Gumsticks motherboards adds their own stuff to it and sells something to an end user. I think they would be the one who owns the support. And they may go to you for some issues. If, if Windows CE is on it, they might go to a CE distributor or maybe direct to Microsoft. But I think that, that, that's one extra party in the chain who the end user is going to go to first if there's a problem. Uh, if I understand it, there, there's a few things in that we can talk about. We sell to everybody. We don't restrict it. So we do sell to hobbyists. We sell to students. Um, but our volume does come from what we call OEMs, which are the time links that embed it into their own product and sell it. So they would support their customer base, correct. So if someone wanted to work with Microsoft and us to develop Windows for the gumsticks, and then they wanted to license that to their customer base, they could also provide the support package for it. That's kind of what we're figuring out how to do. That seems to be the, more, the better fit in terms of responsibility and licensing. Right. Because we do have situations now, which is very common, where people say, I don't want to do gumsticks with Linux because the support is mainly done through the mailing list. Not going to do that. So if we had the alternative where we could say, here it is, and here's the company that you can buy support from, and they'll support you, fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Have you had any OEMs or other companies build a general computing device as opposed to kind of a single function devices that you've shown us? Uh, I can't, I mean, no, I can't say that. I, I can say that they've, it's almost always been towards an application that they're trying to solve or, you know, a need that they have and they're like the running shoe guy trying to stalk someone or, um, or it's, it's, it's uh, um, you know, in a shop floor. Guys are using it for RFID tracking of materials in the shop floor, that kind of stuff. So I can't say it's become a general computer um, cased by us. The closest to that would be the network management guys who buy this and put their application on it and sell it just as the generic gumsticks, but they're not doing any hardware work. And that's a sweet spot for us because then they really like the fact that they can just depend on us doing the hardware side, they do the software side and have a, you know, an appliance solution. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at your competitors, what are the things that you do uh, differently and much better and what are your competitive advantages to them? Our competitive advantage to them? Yes. Um, that's a very good question. I would say probably the biggest thing is the access to um, information and access to product. Um, and, and our biggest competitor is in uh, overseas. And it's very easy to come to the Gumstick site and find out about it. Um, if you click on the support tab at gumsticks.com, which maybe if we could get that set up, Stuart, I'll just show them how to do that. Just go to the, give me the browser of the Gumsticks page and I'll show you how to do that. Um, we post all our information and it's dynamic. Um, the wiki side is completely changeable by all the users. So um, we tend to post the product information on the wiki side, but the programming information is often done by someone who says, hey, I just fixed this. He posts the answer and then it's available for everybody. 
Um, we haven't seen that level of communication by any means with our competitors because typically they sell through a consulting company who charges for that service. That's what we've typically seen. It's very hard for people to get information except through their consultant, whereas we make it all available straight up. And, um, and there is a consulting arm of companies, not arm, but a, gr a group of consulting companies now developing that will consult on the gumsticks technology even though a lot of it, the information is presented there, companies come to us and they say, we're really a software company, can you help some, get someone to help us on the hardware side? And so we can now refer them to other consultants who can do that. Thanks. <clears throat> so if you come into the, uh, to the gumsticks.com site, this support tab is your window into, um, in fact, most people, most of the technical customers um, will actually bookmark this page. So it has just a ton of information on it. Um, this is how you sign up for the mailing list in here um, and find out all sorts of other different things. All our FAQs are listed here. This is the list of the verified consultants. So verified in our case means that they own GUM6 technology and they've already completed a project on uh, with another customer on GUM6 technology. And so that someone could say, gee, I need a certain skill set, they can go to one of these companies. Um, all our guidelines on purchasing, uh, etc. And then all the different application areas or uh, uh, engineering areas for software and hardware. So we just put, when we did the Vertex product announcement, we put this page together. So it's just really a central repository of all the different information on the boards and then links to all the other areas you might want to get to um, related to the, uh, the new Vertex motherboard. So I'm sure people like Nate spend a bit of time in the wiki. And, uh, and, and, you know, tutorials for the students or for new people to the gumsticks uh, technology. It's a tremendous amount of information. Um, we often get criticized that there's too much, so it's a little hard to find things. So we're constantly working to try and make things flow better and link better. Um, but if you want to find out about gumsticks, this is our competitive advantage, and particularly having the community mailing list. Yeah. Can everybody write to this? Yes. It's a true wiki. It is a true wiki, yes. I monitor it, but it is writable by everybody. Yep. Any more thoughts? Any more questions? Yeah. It seems uh, at least the customers you detail to us are primarily the US and the EU. Are there, have you gone into Asia other than Australia? And if not, I'm wondering why, like Taiwan and Japan? Uh, we have customers in Japan, actually buy quite extensively in Japan and in, no, we don't sell into China, so we don't ship to, Ch to Taiwan at this point. Um, we just, there are more export rules for going to, the government, U.S. government rates different countries. So we just basically kept with the second tier and said we don't want to, actually the first tier, we don't want to do the second and third because we already have 60 countries and lots of things going on. And it, it's really been that simple. Um, Shipping is a little easier. You know, we know that the products got to the customer, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's been that sort of simple um, to say. We get requests from India quite a bit about shipping product. So, yeah. Have there been new boards uh, made for like MPEG decoding? Uh, we haven't done that. Uh, uh, you know, every functional area we, we would look at and generally through the mailing list have a discussion about it and understand it and we have an understanding where the market's going. I wouldn't say that at this point, pace point is bigger on our list. Um, you know, we're really looking at the, the, the Goliath communications is what we're really excited about and other related USB activities. Um, we may look into sort of more industrial um, CAN bus, that kind of stuff is, is kind of on the medium term of thinking. Um, but I wouldn't say we've looked at MPEG um, very closely, yeah. As a follow-up to that, Don, do you support or, or encourage or even discourage third parties coming up with other peripheral boards, other specific functional boards, or do you want to own the entire ecosystem of boards and uh, of CPU boards and, and peripheral boards? Uh, I would uh, state categorically we support it, and we would even let people say, you know, in, in any one of the customer sections to say, you know, here's here's what we've got and we've made this particular specific board for the GUM6 environment and come and buy it from company ABC, absolutely. Am I right in saying though that nobody's done that yet? There, there isn't any third party? I, I Someone has done it and I'm trying to think while you're talking because it used to be on the wiki and I, 
I can't think of where it is right now. Um, we made these two, I made these two sections last winter, and um, this commercial section and this personal robotics section. And the idea was to talk about all these different market segments that people had developed. And, you know, we have a company, uh, this is a company in Toronto that was doing this unattended. Well, there's lots of projects doing that. There's a company um, in the Midwest doing this driver safety application. Um, automated meter reading, this is actually done down in South Africa. Um, so just a, you know, a huge variety. But someone has done a board, and I just can't think of where that's been located. And we would certainly encourage it. On the education side, um, so do you have a, a partnership or partner model that, that people can follow in that area, or is it more done on an individual basis? Uh, we don't enough? really, I mean, the partnership is we publish our schematics, right? <clears throat> so um, on, the, on the personal robotics side, we encourage the posting of different projects. Um, you know, I put this up just recently about all the different gumsticks things on YouTube. Um, and then there's all the different universities come in and they, they post all the different things they're doing and, uh, and share it with people around the world. So University of Southampton did a gum sense project. <clears throat> yep. Uh, you, you, you must be well aware of cost issues when you, when you mix the gum sticks. Correct. Uh, can you comment on the on the famous hundred dollar laptop that becomes a hundred and seventy five laptop that still no mortal can buy now called OLBC one laptop per child with a keyboard and display? Uh, I haven't stayed close to that project. When it was in its early stages, we were part of discussions towards that. Absolutely. Um, where it's got to now, I'm not current. So you've already said more than I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you know, certainly with our latest announcements, we are certainly much more, uh, much closer, and what I'll show you afterwards with the LCD screen, to actually having a very small, but it wouldn't be $100. Yeah, um, that's a good challenge. <clears throat> yeah? So even, I mean, you said the specs are available. Does that mean I could make my own expansion board and sell it? Correct. Yeah. Or so combined function? Will open the specifications, but you're not allowed to do anything with it except, like, write software. No, no, it's it's open. It's you know, it's all licensed to be um, used by you and without licensing fees. And and um, you know, even when we developed the RoboSticks board and the Robo Audio board, you know, that took a lot of work. We published the schematics. Um, we do that because we want people to build related boards to our motherboards, and also um, we think we are a very low-cost supplier. So we believe that on our boards and whatever you develop, you'll come back to us anyways. And we do that through automation. Our real focus of our business is automation. Hence, we do everything off the web. It's all prepaid. You know, we don't have to worry about chasing receivables, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, what if uh, someone would decide to develop some more integrated solution? For example, I need more robust, physically robust device, and I don't want to stick to uh, sticks together. Um, and one of those sticks would be a motherboard, and the other one would be one of yours or one of someone else's. Is there a story for that? Is there a solution for that? Put so the, the issue is they're putting it in a harsher environment? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, for example, in a mine environment or something, like that. something yeah. Um, people are doing that right now with the gumsticks. What we cannot answer to them is MTBF uh, or industrial temperature. Um, but they are doing that today. And generally, uh, the ones that I'm aware of, uh, they've not worried about it because the stuff is so cheap anyways. They just say, look, for the one out of whatever is going to break, they just replace it. They, they take it like a, do it like the Bic lighter. So for the truck, one of the trucking applications, the guy um, had to prove to his major U.S.-based, which there's only a couple, uh, courier companies, that his device would work in their trucks. So he stuck it on the front seat of a tractor in the Arkansas desert in the summer facing the sun and it ran, and it was registering 150 degrees inside the box. Yeah, I'm and thinking more, more about physically robust solutions, like for example, the mine safety devices. Um, they need to survive under some banging, some pressure and everything, so it would be logical to have everything on a single, small size motherboard, not on several. Right. Is there a way to integrate it into one? Uh, 
you would only be able to test our mother motherboards, not redesign them. But what I will say is, we do not design the boards for life critical applications, be it medical or mining. They're so light, it would be fairly simple to just pack them in the phone. Yeah, you could, you could take the impact in a lot of different ways. And that's generally casing is how people solve those kind of problems, yeah, for temperature or vibration. Um, we actually hired an engineer last year to do MD, MDBF testing for us. He got distracted with some other projects, so he hasn't done that yet. Yeah? This is half off subject. One company I was with had in their catalog may not be used for life credit application without approval by a, by a vice president. Oh. Basically, they did not want to get sued, because that's right. a natural sport here. We, we just make, a st we have a statement on our site, and we don't actually pass judgment. We just make the statement. So however the OEM wants to use it is up to them. We just mm -hmm. make our statement. And I had that a company in LA was doing some work, and I contacted them and said, you know, one of their engineers had bought our products and I wanted to make sure they knew this statement was there and they said to us well would it work in the application they were using and I said this is our statement and you guys can decide whether or not that suits or not they chose not to yeah so is it good is it fun do you guys find this interesting and relevant to where you're going and what you're doing and a little bit a lot of it where do you see uh, these going in the future see your business moving in the future? Where do you see the embedded space moving in the future? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I think people are only beginning to tap what they can build with very small computers. I really do. Um, and certainly a barrier is that over half the market doesn't want to do it on Linux. Uh, second barrier is the simplicity of getting there. Um, really only this month with some boards, well, the console LCD board we just put out today, um, and um, some other boards for Vertex we'll put out in the next few days. We've only now filled out our third product line, which really is now, I can plug in the screen, I can plug in a keyboard and make a product out of this on my desktop. And, and so the next stage will be what will people do with that? And the creativity is amazing, absolutely amazing. So where is this going? I think it's going to all sorts of decisions people are making today. They realize I don't need to fill up a rack. Right? Maybe I have, we call it a zero U computer, and I can do all sorts of things in very small spaces. Maybe this whole room has got gumsticks doing all sorts of things inside it. So we're only, the industry is only starting to match the hardware up with the software in this space to be able to start really challenging the ideas people have going forward and, uh, and changing the way we do all sorts of stuff. That's where I think it's going to go. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you can, you know, a, Picture this, you're, uh, you're in LA, you're married to a guy who's a trucker. You'll be able to go on your website and know he's safe, he's on the highway, he's here, right? All the doors in his truck are locked. I mean, you send a package to get your passport redone in England. Why wouldn't you know where that is on the way, right, if you wanted to? I mean, all sorts of things that, we're, that are happening now in this space are going to change the way we do a lot of different things. Your rig goes down after a hurricane in the, in, the, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Why don't we send a bunch of fish in there with cameras to go look at it, right? Can be done. There was a arm up here somewhere. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask if you have a, if you're one of the screens with you that, that you can demo out. Yes, I've got it here and, uh, okay. and cool. Stuart will help you uh, display that. Yeah. Um, and if anyone would like this presentation, just email me, don at gumsticks.com, and I'll send it over to you. Uh, you mean CAN bus, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I don't know a lot about that space. We have been asked um, by a number of customers uh, about it, but we've to date said it's not on our roadmap because we wanted to get to the stage we're at now. Um, so as we look to planning further and realizing that's a marketplace we're not playing in, that's under consideration. To give you an answer to say when and how, I can't do that yet, but just to say it's been something we've been talking about as something down the road in a medium term, you know, six to 12 month kind of thing, planning kind of process, right? Yep. When you're into Bluetooth, if you want serious security, you want to be able to enter a code into the two devices and have the code be random and match. How do you do that without a keyboard and a basic barely any switches? Uh, I have no idea. I'm not a programmer. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but you know, now you can put a keyboard into the gumsticks, and uh, and and you know, have a screen right there on it. So the answer would be you can do that now directly. Yeah. You can do that. Those in that image up there, that little round connector in the top left, and the one with the cable coming out, those are serial ports. So you can talk to the gumsticks that way, mm -hmm. and put your pin on the device that way, and then get a Bluetooth connection. There was a hand in the middle here somewhere. Yep. Well, what's your IP protection? It seems like is it, you know, you're know you kind of operating in your trade secrets, where you're not publishing your motherboard specs, but do you have any patents filed on what no. you guys are come up with? No. In reality, could someone build their own gumsticks? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's not the world's toughest engineering project to do. Um, we've just chosen to do it that way to have sort of a core to our business, but no, we haven't filed patents per, per se to, to do that. How much work was it to really reduce this? Because really, what you, your core competency sounds like what it is, is reducing your motherboard size to the size of the gum, um, gum wrapper, right? So how much work was that to, to go do? Is that really difficult? Or? Um, it took Gordon uh, 20 years to get to the point of <laughs> what he wanted to start with and what he got to. And uh, his whole idea, his, his interest, our president's interest is robotics. And he wanted to have a computer that sits on the articulating joint of a robot. So he built in his garage the gumsticks, tiny little gumsticks. So Craig looked at that, who's our CTO, and said, that's great but let's get it to do Bluetooth and 10100 and Wi-Fi and all the other things that a computer can do so it can do all sorts of applications, not just be for robotics. And I looked at that and said, that's great, but we need to sell this thing by the thousands because a huge robotics project is 20 units. Well, that's you know, not very much money when they're 100 bucks each. You don't support a business. So that's how the three of us, the, you know, the partners, work together. And that's how we took what is really not a particularly difficult concept into, you know, the branding is very good, the community is very good, um, the openness of the, the information is very good and built a business on it. So if you've got 20 years, you could take your own concept and go forward. <laughs> and how many people is the company currently? Uh, we're under, just under 10 people. Yeah. But then it's kind of an interesting number to answer because um, that doesn't include the entire community and that doesn't include all the contract manufacturing we use. So. Um, and all the automation, right? So as I say, we all the purchasing done at the website. So all, all our retail purchasing, which is more than 50% of our business, we're not involved with other than shipping product. So you know, all the credit card transactions are done automatically. Um, it, it, we have a, we've spent a lot of time on the back end for what products that requires and the order process for um, control management for making that happen. Um, so. That's why we can do what we can do millions of dollars with a smaller number of people than what would normally take to drive that forward. Yeah? I notice right now both your models use an Intel processor. Are you locked into a partnership with them? Or like in the future, could you use the new Vi at one watt processor? Uh, well, um, we started with Intel, but it's now Marvell because they bought the processor division of Intel. Um, we're not locked into anything. Um, over time, will it be Intel? Potentially. Will it be someone else? Potentially. Absolutely. So, um, you know, there's things we've learned about the flow. It's it works. It's actually worked well with Marvell. They've done a really good job of buying that division and continuing the business well with us and supporting us well. So we're happy about that. Um, we're not at all locked into being um, motherboards based on in Marvell by any means. Yeah. Yeah. So we just did the 270 board, and the Vertex came out in the spring. So obviously, I mean, Moore's law says we're in the middle of working on the next stuff, right? You've got to be. Yeah, so thank you, everybody. That's uh, great to have your interaction, and thank you for being here.